the cloud. Share screen, boom. All right, here we go. Well, thanks everyone for joining me for the third session of this week um, about mapping your network. Of course, I am Ray Ingram and I am your proud deputy organizing officer for Red Wine and Blue. Um, really and truly, this is something you're already doing. Um, you already have been organizing in your community and we just really wanna give you some visualization for you to think through who will you be talking to? Uh, I think it really just starts like with you personally and thinking about like who's in your immediate family. Um, do you want to activate them? Uh, and then moving on from there and thinking about your community, do you want to activate work colleagues, people at your gym, people at your church or synagogue? And then thinking more broadly about even like your school district and folks who go to school with your children. Um, or involved in other community events, um, you'll definitely inevitably end up in somebody's checkout line or it's Starbucks, um, like myself and chat people up. And so I just really wanted to show you this visual of like how we're thinking about it. It's really like it starts with you and then there's just kind of like these bigger communities that are around you. And so we want folks to understand that mapping your network is going to look differently for everyone. I mean, it doesn't mean that you have to activate all your friends. Some of your friends you may not or may want to engage depending on what you know about them. And the same goes for your neighbors or folks and activities um, or that you meet randomly even on a walk or in the checkout line. And so I um, really just want you all to just think about like, who is your network? Why would you want to reach out to them? And what issues do you think they'll be most um, called to activate um, on? And so this is, I think, a really great visualization of like the concentric circles that could make up your network. I'm um, really, just like I said, like really just thinking about who is around you? Because there may be some people that you want to get involved in red, wine, and blue who aren't necessarily in your state. But I would think strategically about who's on the school board or city council or in your legislative district or county um, or even state and what organizations they're affiliated with. Um, I used to be involved with um, a millennial pack. And so while I was in Chicago, and so even though some of those folks were members and weren't always activated, they may have been part of like the Cook County Dems or um, uh, a, a different pack. Like we had a, um, folks that were very involved in this LGBTQ pack. And so I used to start to think about like, I'm not in those organizations, but who do I know in those organizations that maybe I could go present to? Um, and then I also would think like, who can I invite? Do you want to have somebody at a Vino to Vote party or to have them activated to host one? Or would you rather meet them in the community at like the farmer's market or somewhere else? I would just really think about how you want to engage them. And as you're building a simple spreadsheet, which I'll show you in um, the other couple of sl slides, think about how you want to engage them. Maybe it's that you don't want to like necessarily invite them to a Vino to Vote. You just want to have a one-on-one -on -one with them. Or maybe it is you'll go to one of their organizational events. Just really think through how you want to engage folks in your network as you're putting um, your network on paper. So um, I really like to text folks. Um, I know that um, there's signal and it's very safe for organizing, um, particularly I know some of y'all live in some hostile areas. And so you may want to just text folks in Signal or WhatsApp. Um, but then when I'm like, when I am doing my own like little data dump, I just have a very simple Google sheet or Excel to put my stuff in, um, which I'll share with you. Oh, I did share with you earlier, um, just a simple template that you can use to start building your network with some basic fields that you'd want to include. Um, and then I think about some of your mommy and community lists. Um, while my child is not in school yet, I'm sure that when she does go to school, she'll have a um, list of parents and all the things. And so I would even reference those things in the past if they're still relative to where you're organizing. Um, and then also even if your homeowners association, just think about like where you could find information to reach people that you want to engage related to issues you care about or some of the programs that Red, Wine, and Blue is doing. Um, so I did share this like little um, tool. This is very basic of just like how you want to categorize your network. I would literally make a copy of this 
um, I, I shared it with you earlier. And thanks for Amanda for reminding me that I did share it with you. Um, so this is what I shared earlier. And uh, what you can do is make a copy of it and just really just sit down with a cup of coffee, cup of wine, whatever it is, and just kind of do like a brain dump of like, these are the 10, 15, 20, 50 people I want to engage. And just thinking about like, when was the last time you talked to them? Do you know any issues they care about? And that can be a really great starting point for having conversations or inviting them to events or even engaging them to host Vino to Vote parties. And um, I really just want to express to folks, I know that a lot of this technology and a lot of the things that you've been learning this week and you'll learn next week are really um, technical. And so I want to let folks know that there are resources on Google and YouTube to help you better understand Gmail, G Drive, and even Zoom. Um, I'm still learning many of these systems. And so um, don't fret, just know that we're all kind of learning in public together. And so feel free to reference any of those resources if you need any help like technologically or if you need any help like setting up a google sheet or using your zoom and so what i'm going to do is uh we're going to have a conversation uh, about folks building their network because i think that that will help ground things um for folks particularly if you haven't been organizing um very much recently and so um, without further ado, what questions do y'all have? I feel like, Amanda, I've talked to you at length about some of the stuff you've worked on um, in your community. and You're already doing this. <laughs> and so I, I just want to know, what are your best practices for building your network and thinking about who you want to engage in your new role? Well, it's hard when you live in a small town, I think, too. And I feel like I've been doing this and I've I've reached out to a lot of people. So um, I've been talking to my friends about it and we have people in mind from our democratic clubs and, and action clubs and LGBTQ plus clubs that um, uh, will be a different group of people I haven't tapped into yet. And we'll start there. Awesome, awesome. Do you feel any reservations? I mean, yeah, I know that you are definitely a troublemaker and you've been making trouble for a while and so do you have any reservations about reaching out to body in your your network for the work you're going to be doing no not at all i'm a little like um scared sometimes because of the gun call but um i i don't if if we want to do this work we have to do have uncomfortable conversations and I think that's how we have to uncomfortable conversations and getting out of our comfort zone is part of doing this. Absolutely. And I know that you're in rural Pennsylvania. Danielle, what are your thoughts? How do you feel about reaching out to your network or even organizing your contacts for your new role at RWB? Yeah. Um, I don't have an issue with that at all. Um, Cause to be honest, I've been doing this for so long that it's gotten to the point where I've almost weeded out people <laughs> in my life who um, I don't feel comfortable at least a little bit talking about some of this stuff with. Um, and, you know, you, you just get to a point where you're, you're, you're comfortable doing it. Um, and, and like with the new people that you meet, um, it's almost like, I feel I, I would really love to have a conversation with people about like how they test the waters with people. You know, I feel like that would be a really fun conversation. Um, and that's something that to me is, is always like very interesting to try to do. Um, and, and to me, like this work has almost become like a green flag check, like conversation that I have with people a lot of the time. So um, yeah, it's interesting. I'm excited to uh, connect like some of the work that I've been doing and idea of relational, like with my actual local area. Well, we can have that conversation now. I mean, for me, I mean, I very rarely um, connect with people who I don't know have the same values as me. Um, so um, I am a new to this community that I've lived in, I'm living in in Jacksonville. I've only been here seven months. And so 
um, the neighbors that have Trump and go Brandon signs, I know exactly that I won't be engaging them on anything. And so I'm not even going to make an effort to say anything because I just feel like it would be um, an unproductive conversation just knowing that they put that kind of like racist and classist and misogynistic stuff in their yard. <laughs> and so I that's like a non-starter. Um, but perhaps maybe if one of them was like walking their dog, I wouldn't know that because I wouldn't know which house they came from since I'm so new here. Um, but I do think that if you don't know where someone stands, like usually what I do is like send an article. I'm like, what are your thoughts on this? Like the Supreme Court is doing this, or this is like, these are our candidates for state Supreme Court. Which ones do you care about or know about? Like, I think that just having, asking them their opinion, like sharing something and asking their opinion and seeing where they are is a way in which to engage them without necessarily fully disclosing your position on it, just to get a read on them. Um, what would be your like, suggestion amanda so i recently like can give an example of this happening to me i run our local swim i'm on our local swim board here in oh, my cool. community. so i meet like on a swim team like 140 kids so i meet all their parents and it is such a great way to connect and there was one for like two or three days like i was like this lady i think she feels just like me and then um, I, we were talking about schools and she was like, um, I just like hate the direction our school is going. That's why I voted for a conservative board. And I was like, oh, all right. And then I like quick changed the subject. Like I don't want to get into politics with her, but usually I start like with something to do with the school because I feel like that's something that we can all agree on um and kind of get where they stand because if we're not into like I'll say did you hear about this group that's trying to defund our schools and um they're like what who is coming to defund the schools and then like you just explain what's going on to them and even if you can see that they're like a little on, um, like not someone you would talk to, they're open to have a conversation. And I have changed so many minds that way and like get them to come to the board meeting or to look at something our board members have said. And um, I think doing that work in the very beginning of this this coming work with national issues and especially here and that Mastriano is a lunatic and then we have Oz who's even more bizarre it's like a circus um there's a lot more people in our area that are ready to make a change absolutely I feel the same way because I even think about um because everybody necessarily doesn't have children or involved in school boards but I think about like everybody had to have been birthed some kind of way yeah. um, even if they're a birthing person or not at this point in their life but they were birthed and they have yeah. a birth story and so when I talk about black maternal health care yes. I always start with like you were born and so how do you feel about support for people who are birthing babies and that usually I can find out a lot about them just by saying that like how do you feel about there being more support for folks to have doulas um or not necessarily yeah. give birth in a hospital and so even from there from that particular subject I'm able to engage folks because for for instance um like half of my friends have kids and half of them don't some of them, their kids are like about to go to college but like me I have a toddler and so we're not quite in the school district situation yet but I do have swim lessons and soccer and so I can definitely engage people in different spaces but I have to like be like oh what was your birth story and I just find out from them from there like mm, what are their choice points what are they like explaining or not saying and so Danielle would you like to offer an example of one issue you might want to engage people on oh I mean in Michigan like for me, at least through the election day, the biggest thing I'm going to be engaging people on is going to be the, our, our reproductive rights um, bill that's going to be up for on the ballot in yeah. November. Yeah, the, the ballot initiative. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. And that's all related to reproductive health and justice as well. And so mm-hmm. we need to start with like, hey, did you know yeah. that we got this many hundreds of thousands of signatures to even get this? Yeah. The- I really want to engage some of my sorority sisters that I've kind of disconnected a little bit with. Um, kind of go back. There's like an alumni group and I'm going to go back to some of the in-person things kind of post COVID and try and reconnect with some of them. Cause I know like some of them at this point are having kids, you know, they have toddlers and stuff. Um, one of my best friends is from my sorority and she has a toddler. So toddler time. Well, I tell you, my Mm -hmm. daughter two and next month and, uh, it's a lot of work. It's, it's, oh yeah. I knew that going into it, it's great work, but the time goes by fast, but the days are long. <laughs> so, yeah. So I know that uh, Amanda knows all about that. And so she's past the taller t- time. Yeah. Uh, where am I? I'm in the thick of it and I'm feeling it. Um, but uh, I really appreciate y'all joining. And since it's just three of us, I mean, I can answer any and all questions. I want to definitely give you some time back in your day and know that you'll be receiving some stuff over the weekend about optional sessions, of course, that you can attend next week. Um, And I know all of you have um, folks that are starting in your state. So feel free to reach out to the new folks that start on the 8th too, to have one-on-ones and meet with other folks in your um, state one-on-one and even start planning events. We have the really big push for Mally um, Morrow on the 10th. And so I would encourage you to post to your socials, text folks and let people know. I think we already have like several hundred people signed up for the event and the email just went out about it yesterday. And so, yeah, I look forward to hoping that you all can attend some of our stuff next week because we will have um, her. We'll also have a gentleman from the AFL-CIO talking about the January, January 6th situation and what happened as a result of that. And we'll also be having trouble huddles and GTT training. So there's plenty of things for you to attend, to meet other people in your state. Um, and then I know that you all will be leading the huddles and you'll be working with your state leadership team about when you need to be like staff at a certain event. But I would encourage you to attend those um, as just like your regular self, but know that like we'll highlight staff that are there and you may even meet some people from your state or others um, that can be helpful for your organizing efforts. And so um, I would definitely encourage you to do that and read through the organizer guide that I provided, I think Wednesday. Um, it's 18 pages, but it's pretty thorough on like some of the terminology. Like I didn't even know what a trouble maven was myself until Monday. And so I've been here three weeks, just two weeks more than you. <laughs> so um, feel free to acquaint yourself with all the things and start thinking about uh, what you want your events to look like, because I will host like a Vino to vote, like virtual simulated party next week. I don't know exactly what um what my theme will be, but I'll do um, a virtual party for you also, just in case you're kind of nervous about what does this entail? I'll do one. And I think everybody will do just fine with it though. Cool. Well, all right. 622 y'all. Um, this is my last meeting of, uh, this is, this is, I think last of, uh, oh, I don't know. I think 